Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 10 of the chapter Hello Elkanes and Hello Irenes. As a student, I have always felt that whenever you tabulate the information, it becomes easier to memorize it. And therefore, this video is a kind of a tool to memorize the methods of preparation that we've done in the few previous videos and in order to memorize them in a tabulated form. So I've made this table and I would suggest that you may take a screenshot of this table and then once do the table, you get the general layout and then maybe go back again and again to those portions where you feel you need more details and you need to understand it better. So I'll just step out of the frame once, get a screenshot and then I'll start explaining the methods of preparation to you. So in this video, I'm going to be doing the methods of preparation of Hallow Elkanes and Hallow Arenes. And I have divided them, the methods of preparation of Hallow Elkanes on this side and Hallow Arenes on the other side. So by doing that, what have I done? I've categorized them into, there are four different methods by which you can prepare Hallow Elkanes. And there are two main methods by which you can prepare Hallow Arenes. So we put them into two different categories. The other important thing in this topic is there are lots of named reactions. So whenever you have a named reaction, I've underlined it with pink. While wherever, whatever are the steps, like the, the different methods, I've underlined those with blue ink. Just so you know the categories. So let us first come to Hello Elkanes and what are the different methods of preparation of Hello Elkanes. You remember there are four different methods how Hello Elkanes can be prepared. The first is from alcohols, the second is by free radical halogenation, the third is from alkenes and the fourth method is by halogen exchange. Right, so let us understand them one by one. I'll make this a quick video because we've already, I've already explained each one of these in details in the previous videos. Therefore, I would encourage you to watch those. But in order, this is just a memorizing tool. It'll become very easy for you to remember that there are four methods of preparation. One is this, two is this, three is this, four is this. And a little bit of idea of the reactions. So the first method is that you prepare it from alcohols. When you make alcohols react with HX, that is a halogen acid, PCL3, PCL5 or SOCl2 thionyl chloride, phosphorus trichloride or phosphorus trihalide or phosphorus pentahalide. And with these you can prepare the uh, haloalkanes. Usually this is used for uh, the chlorine and bromine derivatives. All right, and in this you use, when you are making it react with the halogen acid, you use zinc chloride. And zinc chloride in the presence of HCl is known as Lucas reagent. I told you the names are really important. So Lucas reagent, when you say what is Lucas reagent? It is the mixture of zinc chloride in hydrogen chloride. HCl and ZnCl2 would be Lucas reagent. So when you have an alcohol, it reacts with HX in the presence of uh, zinc chloride, you get the haloalkane and water is given out. Again, I've done a complete video on alcohols. I would encourage you to watch the entire video. This is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So this is what you need to know about the alcohols. The second method of preparation would be by free radical halogenation. In free radical halogenation, halogenation takes place by free radical mechanism. Like the alcoholic, from alcohols you got it by nucleophilic substitution. By free radical halogenation, you get it by you you get it from uh, hydrocarbons by free radical mechanism. The free radical mechanism has three steps: the initiation step, the propagation step, and the termination step. Again, I would encourage you to watch that video. But let us just see what happens in it. You have a haloalkane here. You have CH three, CH two, CH three. That is propane. It reacts with chlorine in the presence of H nu. H nu is a photon ultraviolet light. In the presence of ultraviolet light, with the removal of hydrogen chloride, if it is a, since you take chlorine here, you get CH3, CH2, CH2, Cl plus CH3, CH, CH3, Cl. So you get a mixture of these two different kinds of isomers of the chloroderivative. So this was by free radical halogenation. Again, I would encourage you to watch the video to get the details of it.
Now the third method of preparation is preparation of haloalkanes from alkenes. Alkenes are saturated hydrocarbons. They have a double bond somewhere. The second bond is a pair of electrons which the two carbons they take back that electron which was forming the bond and the two atoms of the hydrogen acid that of the halogen acid uh, or the hydrogen halide they also take back take one electron each now hydrogen with its one electron and halogen with its one electron would go and join the two carbon atoms and when they do that they result in the formation of a halogen derivative so the first carbon got the got attached to hydrogen so you get ch3 ch2 becomes ch3 and here the ch2 becomes ch2 x the halogen gets attached to the second carbon this is what happens when you have a symmetrical uh, alkene and you get a symmetrical like you get uh, the halogen derivative where the halogen can be attached to any carbon atom when you're naming it if it was attached to the other carbon atom you would have named that you would consider that to be the first carbon atom so they are kind of the same compound but if you have an unsymmetrical alkene in an unsymmetrical alkene it means that number of carbon atoms on the two sides of the uh, of the double bond are different in that case the addition takes place in the form of uh, um, according to markovnikov rule right the addition would take place according to markovnikov rule and if you use a peroxide the addition would take place against the Markovnikov rule, therefore it is known as the anti-Markovnikov addition or it is known as the Karash effect. Again, I'd encourage you to go back to the videos, watch the details of each one. This is just a revision. This is just a synopsis of what we have done. You can carry out the complete bromination or halogenation of it also. For example, instead of using HX, you could use Br2 in the presence of CCl4 and you get a di substituted halogen um, a di substituted halogen derivative so you get if you had ethene it combines with bromine in the presence of ccl4 you will get ch2 ch2 and the bromines will get attached to both the carbons the method is basically the same the second bond breaks each one and one bond between these two breaks and one atom comes and attaches and forms new bonds with both the carbons so this is by addition reaction in the case of alkenes where you get haloalkanes. The fourth method is by halogen exchange. Whenever you have uh, an atom which is more reactive or which would form a more stable product, there is a competition that is set up. So you can have a halogen substitute another halogen in a haloalkane. But for that, that particular halogen should be stronger. So that is what happens. We know out of all the halogens, iodine is the one which has the, which has the largest atoms and therefore the bond length is the longest and it's easiest to, to dissociate iodine. And iodine therefore does not even require the drastic, it does not require Zn Cl2, it does not require the ultraviolet light. So uh, iodine would simply react on its own because it is more reactive and due to which iodine usually can easily substitute the other halogens and what are the other halogens bromine and chlorine not fluorine so it can substitute bromine and chlorine from its halogen derivatives so that method is known as the halogen exchange in this there are two different named reactions again this is important for you to memorize in this you have two named reactions in halogen exchange the first is known as the Finkelstein reaction and the second is the Swartz reaction both of them are halogen exchange methods Finkelstein reaction is in the presence of dry acetone you use sodium iodide and the iodine is furnished from the sodium iodide in a halo LK so X should be chlorine or bromine and iodine takes the place of that so Sodium iodide in the presence of dry acetone is used in the case of Finkelstein reaction. You get the iodo derivative and sodium halide is given out. And Swartz reaction on the other hand is used only to get, only to substitute the halogen that is chlorine and bromine with fluorine. So when you have to do that, you again use a metallic fluoride, for example, silver fluoride is used and CH3Br is the uh, halogen, uh, the haloalkane and you make it react with silver fluoride and you get the fluoro derivative. So this is Swartz reaction is a method of halogen exchange in which you get the fluoro derivative and Finkelstein reaction is the halogen exchange method in which you get the iodine derivative of the halogen. So 
These were the methods of preparation of halo alkanes. On the other hand, if you come to halo arenes, there are two different methods of preparation of halo arenes. The first is by electrophilic substitution and the second is from diazonium salts. The first electrophilic substitution, I have done a, an entire video on this and I would encourage you to watch it just as we talked of the uh, nucleophilic substitution here, the uh, free radical mechanism here uh, in this process. Here, for the formation of aromatic uh, halogen derivatives, you use electrophilic substitution mechanism. So electrophilic substitution takes place and how, how do you have, you have for example you have benzene and benzene reacts with the halogen and it results in the formation of the halogen derivative in the presence of iron and in darkness. Now again there are far more details in the video that I have done and I would encourage you to watch that. If you for example have toluene instead and the halogen is being added to it you will get a mixture of two derivatives that is the two derivatives would be ortho and para isomers would be obtained so you get a mixture of ortho and para uh, what uh, if it was chlorine let's say ortho and para halotoluene it will be chlorotoluene it may be bromotoluene so you get it you get haloarenes by electrophilic substitution and the last method of preparation or the second method of preparation of haloarenes is from diazonium salts this again is a very important uh, part for in terms of examinations because you'll get these named reactions what is a diazonium salt when you have benzene ring to which n2cl has been added or n2x is added that salt is known as a diazonium salt azo is for the nitrogen and diazonium is where it does two nitrogens so it's a diazonium salt how do you get it you take an amine and when you react an amine with sodium nitrite and a halogen acid you get the diazonium halide of whatever benzene diazonium halide if it is chlorine it is benzene diazonium chloride benzene diazonium bromide or whatever so there are named reactions again here and there are three named reactions which are really important what are those? They are Sandmeyer's reaction, the Boltz-Scheinman reaction, and the Gatterman reaction. What were the named reactions that well, the names that we had in this side? We had the name of Lucas reagent, we had the name of Finkelstein reaction, and we had the name of Swartz reaction. So you have to remember what are the three names and in which category do they fall. So that way you will never forget. You. That would be a little hint, you know. If you relate things, it becomes easier to remember the names too. So these three names have to do with formation of halo alkanes and these three names have to do with the formation of halo arenes what are the three names Sanmer, Boyle Scheiman and Gatterman and all these three named reactions are the methods of preparation from diazonium salts so what is Sanmer's reaction in Sanmer's reaction you take the diazonium salt and you make it react with cuprous um, uh, halide CO2 X2 and where X is chlorine or bromine and you get the halogen derivative and nitrogen is given out. Similarly, you could carry it out for uh, iodine. For iodine, it is done in the presence of potassium iodide and you have to warm it up. N2X is made to react with Ki and then you will get the iodine derivative. You'll get the iodine will get substituted to the <coughs> benzene ring. So you'll get benzene iodide plus N2. In Boyle's scheiman reaction, you again take the diazonium salt, make it react with HBF4 and this gives you an intermediate and the intermediate is where the Cl gets uh, substituted by BF4 so you get N2 BF4 negative, you get this ion as an intermediate which then uh, the N2B gets uh, uh, and F3 are removed and you get the fluoroderivative nitrogen and VF3 which means the boltz scheiman reaction is used to get the fluorine derivative of benzene. And Sandmeyer's reaction was used to get the chloro, uh, bromo and iodo derivatives of the benzene. Gatterman reaction is another way of uh, preparing the haloalkanes again of chloro and bromo. And in Gatterman reaction you use the diazonium salt in the presence of copper and HX the halogen acid where X is chlorine or bromine and this X gets substituted on the benzene ring so you get either the chloro derivative or the bromo derivative 
So this was a table that I would like you to memorize, which would really help you to uh, uh, to uh, kind of keep the, all the previous videos that we did. They would just uh, go and settle down in your head before we proceed to the next topic. So I would encourage you to understand the details of each one, of course. But if in your mind you have this table, you know, uh, when, you, when you go for an examination, uh, when you're sitting and you're writing, you get pictures of uh, these things or those pictures the images of the tables that you make would automatically come in your mind's eye and it will become very easy for you to attempt those questions if you have an idea a general idea of how things are going you know when we do one topic after the other after the other after the other sometimes we kind of get confused and it gets intimidating especially in chemistry where we have so many reactions so at that time, your best tool is to tabulate. Tabulate and in your mind's eye, always see that picture of a table. And from that table, you may go into the details, right? So that was my attempt with this video. I hope it is helpful for you to memorize all this. And uh, with this, I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.